of rules and values and principles through which we choose to govern ourselves, determining what is right and what is wrong, what should be done and what is not to be done, what we can do and what are we supposed to abstain from. And because of the consequences of morality and the consequences of immorality, this subject becomes of extreme importance. For example, it is moral to think that human life is very valuable. Now, the opposite of that is, it is immoral to devalue humans. So, a moral person would have respect for human life and an immoral person will not have respect for human life. So now, inshallah, you see the evil consequences of immorality and the blessings of morality. Equally important question is, where do we get morality from? Where do we get our morality from? Who gets to decide whether an issue is moral or an issue is immoral? Islam recognizes four sources for the whole concept of morality. Number one is a revelation. By revelation we mean what God said either through the Quran or through the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. And generally speaking, when you look into either the Quran or through the Sunnah, very rarely you see specifics. Rather, what the Quran does is Allah gives the general command, such as in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 90. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah commands of righteousness and justice. But it really does not go into details as far as what righteousness is and what justice is. And then the following statement of the verse says, Allah forbids all kinds of immoral actions, whether they be private or they be public. Allah also forbids injustice or aggression against other people. So now we see in Islam, it is not only a moral obligation. There is an additional meaning that is added to it. And that is, it makes it a religious obligation. The second source that Islam recognizes as a source of morality is human reasoning. Remember, Allah created intellect for us for a reason. So, we are supposed to put our intellect in the proper channels. We cannot put our intellect on vacation and just hope that somebody else does the thinking for us. We have got to use our intellect. When we speak about the Quran, respecting reason, the Quran, respecting intellect, we are speaking about the intellect that goes parallel to the teachings of the Prophet wasallam and the teachings of the Quran, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, give a beautiful example to explain this relationship between intellect and revelation. He said, it is like the relationship between eyesight and light. And then he gave an example. If you put a person with perfect eye vision in a very dark room, his perfect eye vision will be of no use to him or to her. So what that person needs is to benefit of his perfect eye vision is that there is an element of light that is required. So he said, Similarly, your intellect without that revelation is like your eyesight in that very dark room. It would be of no benefit to you if it is not accompanied by godly guidance, if we may use this term. Along with this source, there are also the common universal laws. Common universal laws that are generally accepted by the people. There may be a source defining whether certain issues are moral or immoral. We are not looking for the consensus of the masses here. There is that universal common sense or universal law. For example, stealing is wrong. Whether you are a Muslim or a Hindu or a Christian or a Jew or an atheist, people know that stealing is wrong. Also, one of the ways that the Prophet 
spoke on morality and immorality is by talking about the consequences of immorality. When he said in a Sahih Hadith of Sunan in the Majah, volume number five, book of Al-Fitan, Hadith number 4019, it was narrated that the Prophet wasallam said one time, Ya Mashir al-Ansar, and these were the people who helped him in Medina. Ya Mashir al-Ansar, so everyone started paying attention. And then he said, Khamsu khisadin, in tudrikuhunna, wa'udhu billahi, an tudrikuhunna. He said, five traits, five qualities, or five events, if they happened in your time, and I seek refuge in Allah, that they do not take place during your time. And listen to what the Prophet wasallam said. He said, if people are guilty of five things, then there are going to be five consequences that are very appropriate from these five events that have been taking place. And then he said the following. He said, مَا مَنَعَ قَوْمٌ زَكَاتَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ إِلَّا مُنِعَ قَتْرٌ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَلَوْلَ الْبَهَيْمُ لَمْ يُنْتَرْ He said, when the people stop giving their zakah, the obligatory charity, that is the right for the poor, Allah will stop sending them rain from the sky. And had it not been for the animals, Allah would have never sent a drop of water on these people. What we know to is that morality goes beyond defining what is right and what is wrong. It exceeds and goes beyond the individual. It even says the rights of other people. And if you are fulfilling the rights of other people, then you are a moral person. And if you are neglecting the rights of other people, then you are becoming immoral. He said, when the rich in the community do not fulfill their rights with regard to the poor or the community, there is going to be a consequence for such an immoral behavior. And it is also not enough that you be moral, but we should also make sure that we are advocates of morality. You know, it's so beautiful that the Prophet wasallam spoke and educated for morality when he said in a Sahih Hadith of Mustadarak al-Hakim, volume number two, Hadith number 4221, I was said by Allah to complete the perfection of morality. He is serving his mission and he said, my mission is about spreading morality. When you see wrong in your community, unless you do not do something about it, it is going to creep into your own community. Because it does not concern you, it doesn't mean it should not be corrected. Rather, whenever you see wrong, you got a moral and ethical obligation with regards to that. And there is nothing better, absolutely nothing better than help the area around you. And wherever you may be, make sure that you are a strong advocate of justice and you are a strong advocate of morality. This was the advice of the Prophet wasallam. This is the advice that I give to myself and this is the advice that I give to my brothers and sisters. With this, I would like to end my talk. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.